Chapter 9, Lesson 4, Changing Dimensions. Our content target is students will understand that changes in dimensions affect both the perimeter and area of a polygon. Our language target students will demonstrate their understanding by determining the change in area and perimeter of various shapes. So changing dimension effects on perimeter. If the dimensions of a polygon are multiplied by x, then the perimeter of the polygon changes by a factor of x. So what it means is, is that if I am multiplying each side by 2 to get 4 and 3 times 2 to get 6, that means that the perimeter, which is the distance all the way around, so 3 plus 3 plus 2, which is 8, is going to be multiplied by 2 to get the perimeter of the other triangle, which would be 6 plus 6 plus 4, which is 16, and 8 times 2 is 16. So by whatever you're multiplying one side by, that's what your perimeter is going to be. So when we look at example one, it says suppose the side lengths of a parallelogram at the right are tripled. So if they're tripled, that means times three. What effect would this have on the perimeter? So if each side were multiplied by three, three times three is nine, four times three is 12, the perimeter then would be three and four. If I add all the sides together, three plus three is six, plus four is 10, plus four is 14. Then if it's tripled, that means it would have to be three times as big as the other one. So if I added nine and 12, so if I add all of those together, 12 plus nine is 21. And 21 plus 21 is 42. 13 times three, I'm sorry, 14 times three. Three times four is 12. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4, which is 42, which is the same. So if your polygons are changing in, in perimeter, find out what you have to multiply by, and multiply that perimeter by that to see. Here's another example. Suppose the sides of the length of this trapezoid at the right are multiplied by 1 half. What effect would this have on the perimeter? So if we're going, to multi we're going to create this new trapezoid, and all the sides are half of what they are. So this means that half of 14 is 7, half of 24 is 12, half of 13 is 6 and a half. So the, air, the perimeter of this trapezoid up here when adding all the sides together, you get 14 and 14 is 28, plus 24 is 52, plus 13 is 65. So the perimeter of this smaller trapezoid would be half of this. So I could multiply that by one half. So let's take a look. So we have seven plus seven is 14. 14 plus 12 is 26. 26 plus six and a half would be 32.5. So half of 62 just happens to be 32 and a half. So when we talk about perimeter, Whatever you're increasing or decreasing by, it's also going to be the same for your perimeter. But when we talk about area, area is a little bit different. 
if the dimensions of a polygon are multiplied by x, then the area of the polygon is multiplied by x times x or x squared. So it's going to be the power of that number, such as our model here, 5 and 4, 5 5 times 2 is 10, and 4 times 2 is 8. So since we're multiplying it by 2, to find the area then, it would be 2 to the second power, or we'd have to multiply it by 4. So to find the area of the small rectangle, we take length times width. Area equals 5 times 4, which is 20. So to find the bigger rectangle, I have to multiply 20 times 4. And 20 times 4 is 80. Just like here, area equals length times width. Area equals 10 times 8. So the area equals 80. And notice that how those are both the same. Even when it comes to triangles, it says the side lengths of the triangles at the right are multiplied by 5. So if they're multiplied by 5, that's what x is. That's what we're multiplying by. What would the effect have on the area? Well, since it's 5, and I'm going to take 5 to the second power, 5 times 5 is 25. So it's going to be 25 times larger from the small triangle to the big triangle and we'll show that so triangle area equals one half times the length times the height or my base times height so i have one half times two times one half of two is one so one times one the area equals one if I look at the big triangle, I take area equals one half times the base times the height. One half times 10 times five. Half of 10 is five. Five times five is 25. So notice that if I multiply one times 25, I get 25. So it's 5 to the second power larger, or 25. Let's take a look at one more. It says a rectangle measures 2 feet by 4 feet. Suppose the sides are multiplied by 2 and a half. What effect does this have on the area? Justify your answer. So if I create my small rectangle, and this is 4, and this is 2, we're going to find the area of a larger triangle, a rectangle. So by finding 2 and a half. So 2 and a half times 4, 2 times 4 is 8, half of 4 is 2, so that means this would be 10. 2 times 2 is 4, half of 2 is 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. So let's find the area. Here's 4 times 2. So the area equals length times width. Area equals 4 times 2, which area equals 8. So over here, area equals length times width. Area equals 10 times 5. So the area is 50. So we're going to take two and a half to the second power, and that's going to tell us how much more it's going to change. So two and a half times two and a half is 6.25. So I'll bet if I multiply eight times 6.25, 
I get this. So I take 8. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 2 is 16. Plus 4 is 20. 8 times 6 is 48. Plus 2 is 50. Two numbers after the decimal. Two numbers after my decimal. And I get 50 and 50. So it changed by a total of six and a quarter by taking two and a half times two and a half.